All right, everybody, we're on Unit 12. Um, we'll be covering right triangle trigonometry. So first off, what is trigonometry? Well, trigonometry comes from the Greek word meaning triangle measurement. So if you think about like trigon or tri, tri is like three. Uh, uh, polygon is like many sides. So trigon is like three sides, a triangle, okay? And then metry is like measurement. So trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that studies the relationships of angles and sides of a triangle, okay? Specifically, we'll be talking about right triangles. So if we look at this triangle, this little box in the corner, that's telling us that this is 90 degrees, okay? That is a right triangle. All right, so what is a trigonometric ratio? Or what's a trig ratio? Usually I'll call it a trig ratio. Well, a ratio is, is similar to like a fraction. A fraction is like part of a whole. If I give you half of a candy bar, you get one half of it, okay? It's part of a whole. Whereas a ratio is where we compare two things. So um, a trigonometric ratio is a ratio of two sides of a right triangle, okay? All right, so here we have three sides and we can compare those and we can set up some ratios, okay? We can compare those sides. Next we have is our reference angle, okay? So if we have a reference angle, oftentimes we will have something written like that, saying that's the angle that we're looking for or that we're given that angle. Sometimes this is labeled as theta, okay? It's a Greek letter. Typically we use theta for our angles, but we could be any, it could be any, it could be A, B, it could be X, okay? But typically we use theta for angles, okay? So a reference angle is the angle you base off of, okay? So if we're talking about, like, we're going to use this, this uh, reference angle, and using those reference angles, we'll be able to kind of better compare which sides we're going to be using, okay? And they'll make a little more sense when we start labeling those sides. So we use the, the symbol theta, or Greek letter, okay? And we, it's spelt theta, Okay, that's its name. Okay. All right, now we're going to label these three sides of our triangle. Uh, you probably talked about hypotenuse before. Hypotenuse, we'll write that here. Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, okay. The hypotenuse, we'll write that over here. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle, okay? It's also the largest side, okay? So here's our 90 degrees. If we go straight across opposite of that angle, that would give us the hypotenuse, okay? So again, it's always your longest side. Next, we have the opposite side and adjacent side. So it really depends on what our reference angle is. So since we have our reference angle is here, okay, the opposite side, so the opposite of that angle would be over here. This would be our opposite. Okay. And then here, this side is adjacent to that reference angle. So that's why we will call this adjacent, the adjacent side, okay? All right, oftentimes we will abbreviate that. The, eight, the hypotenuse will be an H. Opposite, we can just use O, and adjacent, sometimes we'll just call it A, okay? All right, so the opposite side is the side opposite the reference angle. And the adjacent side is the side adjacent 
or next to the reference angle. Okay, and it's not the hypotenuse. Okay, so like the hypotenuse is also adjacent to that angle, um, but again, we'll never, our hypotenuse is always that longest side. Okay, so um, pause the video if you would and see if you can label these three triangles. Sorry about that. Okay. All right, so here's our reference angle. This would be our hypotenuse. Again, it's our longest side. It's always across from that 90 degrees. We have our opposite. It's opposite of that reference angle. And then here is our adjacent. Okay. If you didn't do the others, pause and do these ones. Hypotenuse, this is our opposite, or just O, I guess, opposite, and then this would be our adjacent. Hypotenuse, oops, that looks like a A. Hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent, okay? Another way you can kind of remember those words is HOA. So if you ever have a house where you have an HOA, to pay money for upkeep or a pool or whatever, HOA, okay? Hypotenuse opposite adjacent. All right, so there is a relationship between a reference angle and two, um, two of the sides of the triangle, okay? Um, and they are sine, we call this sine, it's spelled like this, S-I-N-E, that's sine. This is cosine. And then this is tangent. We just abbreviate to S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N, um, probably just because it's quicker. And that's what we have on our calculators, okay? Those buttons that you'll be using, okay? So sine, cosine, and tangent. So there's a relationship between an angle um, and the sides, okay? Sine is a we should write this down, is a function, okay? A function is something that has one input and one output, or at least for all of our cases, that's what we're going to be having. So it's kind of like a vending machine where you put in a dollar and you get a Pop-Tart, okay? Or put in a dollar, you get a fruit snack, Okay, so it's just something like that where you can plug in. We've done that all the time with like with our equations before where we plug in an X and it gives us a Y. All right, so this function is the sine function. And if you plug in an angle, it will give you a ratio of two sides. Okay, and the ratio, the sides that we use here is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, um, if you have a, a different set of, a different combination of sides, we have different functions. So cosine, cosine is, relates the angle to um, this ratio, the ratio of adjacent and hypotenuse. And then the last possible combination would be opposite over adjacent, okay? So you're gonna need to memorize this. A really easy way to memorize this is the acronym or mnemonic, um, so ka toa SOKOTOA. And SOKOTOA basically takes all we all this stuff that we wrote up here and makes it into one word, okay? Okay, so Sokotoa. Sokotoa, this is saying that sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal, cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? 
So if we can remember that and be able to like say that, write that down on a test or on a homework, that will really help you out. Okay, so let's do a couple problems. The first thing we're going to do is talk about or trying to find a trig ratio. Okay, so we're just going to write down those ratios. Okay, given that we have some side lengths that we know. So for example, tangent, well if we look at tangent, tangent is opposite, opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, and we need to figure out which of those sides are the opposite and adjacent. So for any of these problems, I would like you to make sure you identify that reference angle and then label the sides just like we did above, HOA. Okay, so here is our hypotenuse, our opposite, and our adjacent. Okay, um, it just goes in that order, HOA. Okay, and then we know what O is. Well, O is uh, 12, and H is 20. Okay, so we got it. We got our ratio. The only thing we need to do left is just simplify that fraction. So we can divide top and bottom by 4, and we'll end up getting 3 fifths, and you're done, okay? So that is finding trig ratio. Let's give this one another, another example, okay? So it says they want to find us the ratio um, for cosine of z, okay? So here we're not using theta. Here they're saying we're going to use angle z, all right? So just what, what letter that we're using is that angle, okay? So, but again, we know what cosine is. If we look up here, we have so ka, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so we need to label our sides. Probably should have done that first. So we have our hypotenuse, our H, O, A. And we need A and H, so that's 21 over 35. Sorry, those letters are a little blurry. Okay, and then we want to see if we can reduce it. Well, it looks like we could probably divide it top and bottom by 7. And that would give you 3 fifths. Okay? Is that the same thing we got before? Yeah, it was 3 fifths. Okay. All right. Okay, here's another example. Um, let's see, we did a sine, a tangent, cosine here. This is a sine. So sine, again, we know is... So, if we look again at our so katoa, so is opposite over hypotenuse. Let's label our sides. Here is our reference angle. It tells us we're doing angle A, which is right here. So that's our hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent, HOA. And remember these, the, the hypotenuse and the adjacent here are very close. Just remember that hypotenuse is always the biggest number, and it's always across from that 90 degrees. Okay, so O is 9, and H is 41. That can't be reduced, so that's our answer. Okay, all right, so pause and see if you can do D and E, and then we'll go to the other half of our lesson. So again, here's our reference angle, here's our H. O, A, okay, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Again, we look up here, it's our opposite over hypotenuse, our O over H, so that would give us 15 over 20, and then that can be reduced, divided top and bottom by 5, that gives you 3 fourths, okay? And then we're going to do cosine of X. Here is our reference angle. Here's our HOA. Okay. And then cosine, cosine of X is, again, we may need to look at that again, but so ka, a, a, h. A is 10, and h, I think that's 26. I'm sorry, that's blurry. I need to fix that. Okay, and that can be reduced. Looks like we could divide everything by 2. So that would give us 5 over 13. 
All right, so that is identifying um, trig ratios. Okay, so that's half. The other thing is we're gonna today we're gonna talk about finding the angle. So if you set up your ratio like like this, and we want to be able to figure out what that angle is, okay? Because we know it's a function; they're related. So we're gonna talk about how to find how to get that theta by itself. So let's do a quick review. If we're trying to solve these equations, if we want to solve for x, well, here we would divide both sides by 2, right? Because the opposite of multiplication is division. If we have a problem like this, this is adding 2, so the opposite of that would be subtracting 2. So that is the opposite or the inverse um, that would get you x by itself. Okay? Or last example here, if we want to get x by itself, well, what's the opposite of squaring? Well, that's the square root, okay? So that would cancel and we get x is equal to 2. All right, so those are like, they're called inverses or operations, inverse operations, okay? Um, now if we want to solve for theta, well, this isn't multiplication. This is like a function. Um, in the in I think next year we didn't really talk about it this year, but sometimes we can write an equation that looks like you know y equals mx plus b. Um, we can rewrite it in what's called function notation, um, which looks very similar, um, but it's just a different way. Sometimes we can do fun or like operations like multiplying and adding functions in function notation. But anyways, this is very similar. We can't we can't divide both sides. We can't do this and have that cancel um, because it's not multiplication, it's just a function, kind of like a vending machine, okay? All right, so we do have something that will cancel out a sign and that's called an inverse, okay? Because you can go sine inverse. But if you do it to one side, you've got to do it to the other. So sine inverse. The sine inverse and the sine on the left side will cancel we get theta is equal to sine inverse of four fifths. Okay, and at this point you're going to need to have your calculator, right? Let's see if I can get mine working here for you to see a little bit. All right here. Okay, so um, it may look a little different than this, but um, uh, the stuff is usually about the same location. So let's see what we can do. So here we had, I think it was sine inverse of four fifths. So if you look here, kind of, I can't really see what I'm touching or anything, but here where I touch white or those points right there, if you can see those, um, those are your trig functions, okay? Um, but we want to do their inverse. So if you look right above those, there's like a sine to the negative one. So that is the sine inverse, the inverse function for sine, okay? And to do that, you'll need to do something like second and then press sine. If you have um, another, like a Casio, I think it uses like a shift, so do shift sine, but the same sort of thing. And then we'll do four divided by five, okay? Or you could have it be as a fraction if you wanted it to look like a fraction, but that's the same. Push enter, and it gives you your answer, okay? If your answer is like 0 0.9 something, 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 it's because it's in a different unit, okay? Just like we have inches and centimeters, um, or we have Celsius or... Um, Celsius or Fahrenheit, okay? There's two different units for angles. We have degrees, which is what I have it in, or you could have radians, okay? So a circle is 360 degrees or two pi radians, okay? So you may not be in the right units. Um, you can click on mode, or if you have a different calculator, sometimes they have setup. Um, and you'll be able to see that there's like a place where you can choose radians or degrees. If you have any questions on those, just let me know. And then that should fix it. You just put it in again, and it should switch it to degrees. And that's what you're going to need. Okay? All right. So if you have questions, again, let me know. All right, let's go back to here. So we plug that in. 
So I'll grab my calculator. I guess it was like 53 sine inverse. Sorry, I don't remember what it was. So here I got 53.13 degrees. Okay, so make sure you use degrees because that's what we're using for our units. Okay. All right. So that's basically what we're going to cover. Um, uh, so let's do a couple more examples together. Again, that's the Sokotoa. Um, again, we're going to label our sides. We're always going to label our sides. So here we have HOA, where they give us the opposite and the adjacent. So here we kind of have to think about that a little different. Like what trig uses opposite and adjacent? Well, if we look up here, opposite and adjacent, it's over here. It's our tangent. Okay. So we do tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And now we need to get theta by itself. And we do that by taking the inverse of both sides. So you'll get theta is equal to tan inverse of 9 over 7.4. And we will just plug that into our calculator. So pause if you need that, that time to do that. Okay, so I'm just looking up mine real quick. Here we are. Okay, so I end up getting theta is approximately equal to 50.57 degrees. Okay, so let's do a couple more and then you can practice a few at the end if you feel like you need to or else you can just work on your homework. All right, so again, reference angle. We have H, nope, that's not our H. This is our H, O, A, okay? And then we're given the H and the A. So which trig uses the adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, that would be cosine. So we'll do cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we'll need to do the inverses, cosine inverse of both sides. And that's good. We'll just put that into our calculator. So we'll type in cosine inverse. Again, you need to do something like second cosine or shift cosine. We do 5 divided by 16. And I end up getting 71.79 degrees. Okay, and we're rounding to the hundredths place. Okay, and here's one more. We have our reference angle. This is our HOA. Uh, we have hypotenuse and adjacent again. So we're still going to do cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to 20 over 24. We'll do cosine inverse of both sides to get theta by itself. And we'll plug that into our calculator. And we should end up getting 33.56 degrees. All right, so pause and give these ones a try if you'd like. Um, you can even skip to the answers to check them at the end. You don't need to watch all of it, okay? And um, if not, I'll just see you later. Okay, so reference angle. Again, we have hypotenuse, HOA. You can even do HOA, like label the sides for all of them first if you'd like. HOA, and then here's our HOA, okay? And then we'll figure out which trig uses those sides. So we have O and H. That's our SO for Sokotoa. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. And then we'll do the inverse of both sides. So we got theta by itself. Okay. Um, we'll plug that all into our calculator. And we end up getting theta is approximately equal to 21.01 degrees. Okay, so this is meaning approximately equal to, because we rounded, it's not exact. All right, here we go. We have our adjacent and hypotenuse. So that's so ka, a, our cosine. So cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Then cosine inverse of both sides get theta by itself. Pl 
put that into our calculator, we get 15.79 degrees. And then for F, looks like we have opposite and adjacent. So for SOCA, TOA, OA, we're going to use tangent. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, and we'll use our inverse for both sides. So cosine, oops, not cosine, tangent. Tan inverse to both sides. That cancels. And we'll put that into our calculator. Again, we really only we only plug this part. We don't ever try and do theta equals. Okay, so you just type in tan inverse of 14 over 28, and that should give you 26.57 degrees. All right, so that is um, it. If you have questions, please let me know. We'll see you later.